Hello and welcome to another video. Hello! Is John Feldman a bad producer? Today we're gonna be looking at my top 10 of John Feldman's album productions. I know that out there is a lot of hate for John Feldman, but this man really did produce some great records. I have to admit I found his newer productions to be too sterile and they kind of all started to sound the same. Maybe since California by Blink and yeah, it kind of annoyed me since then. But let's talk about the good stuff. I went through all of these upcoming albums for the video in order to be able to make the decision if it's in the top 10 or not. As a standard of evaluation, I tried to find a mixture of how well do I like the album and how good is the sound or the production. I know John Feldman is a producer, but producer does not always mean that he produced the albums completely or that he mixed them automatically. The term producer is unfortunately not always used consistently, but on all the albums on my list he was significantly involved. And you may be surprised to find that John Feldman has produced some of the upcoming albums. Number 10. Panic at the Disco, Vices and Virtues. I have to admit I'm not very familiar with this album, but I listened to it for this video. And I have to say it's not a bad album, but it's just not my style. I was never a big Panic at the Disco fan, or rather I just didn't have much exposure to them except their hits. Nevertheless, it's really not a bad album and I like the production and some songs on it. The album has a pretty unique character and the song Hurricane stood out to me in particular as my favorite song from the album. Speak to me, oh put my heart in ease, and I believe that half the time. Number 9. Lead Sales Paper Anchor Atreyu. Atreyu's fourth studio album was released in 2007, showcasing the band's shift away from their metalcore roots. The album was a commercial success, peaking at number 8 at the Billboard 200 chart. Feldman's influence is evident in the album's sound, which features a more polished and commercial approach compared to Atreyu's previous work. The album's heavy use of clean vocals and catchy melodies also reflects Feldman's pop-punk background. Despite the departure from their traditional metalcore sound, a trio's experimentation with different genres and collaboration with Feldman proved to be successful, resulting in their most commercially successful album to date. I have heard of this album before my research for this video, but I have never like give it a real listen because back then it, it this just wasn't my music. It was like too hard but when I listen to it today I think it, it, it it's not that hard I mean yeah I, back then I just listened to Offspring and Blink uh, of course and Green Day and Chili Peppers and yeah maybe a trio where someone would scream at you it was a little too hard for baby Mark you know But today I have to say it's a very cool album. And before I forget to mention, this channel now offers channel memberships. So if you want to support what I do, I would appreciate it forever. Check out the link in the description. There is also a PayPal link where you can send how much money you think is appropriate. However much you will send me, it will ensure that I can keep going with what I love. So thank you. Number eight, Mest, Wasting Time. So this is maybe an artist or an album that you haven't heard about because they only have 97,000 monthly listeners on Spotify. But they're very cool. They're just full on pop punk, especially back then, 2000, the album. Wasting Time has really some cool songs, especially Hotel Room. I like this part where it goes speedy vocal thing and everything sounds a little ska punkish. That's what I love about the vibe of that time period. The band toured as an uh, opening act for Goldfinger back then, I think 2002 or so. Feldy produced the 2000, the 2001 and 2003 album, maybe even later, but I haven't looked it up. But if I had to pick one, I would definitely recommend the Wasting Time of 2000 because it's just it's just a vibe you know the time period the music ah oh, it's so good What's the 
Number seven, California Blink-182. Well, California, the seventh studio album of Blink-182, the first album without Tom DeLong. That was a crazy time, man. But I was still excited to see Blink go and work with a producer again. A real producer, not like a little producer here, a little producer there. No, a real producer like Jerry Finn back in the days. Bored to Death was the first single and when it dropped I was so hyped because all the years Tom uh, being in the band with all his side projects I was really annoyed that they weren't able to get it second album finished. I was a little disappointed back then with Neighborhoods because I found it to be plus 44 meets Anderson Airwaves and not Mark and Tom working together to create a Blink album. So I was disappointed and I, then Dogs Eating Dogs came out which I found to be a little better and then they uh, there were rumors that they wanted to rent a house again as they did with the Untitled album. So I was very hyped and then Booyah! Tom is out again! Thank you! And I was really hyped when Matt Skiba joined the band because that meant that Blink is now going forward, finally recording a new album again. And with John Feldman, I just known him from that he's the lead singer of Goldfinger. Back then I had no idea that he was like a well-known producer. <laughs> I just knew him from like Superman, Tony Hawk. I found the album to be okay. It's a cool summer album and all, but it's like too sterile. The album would have been better if not after the album released, there were like five albums that had the same sound as California and a, gr and a great album lives also from its unique sound. You listen to the album and it's just this album that has that particular sound. And with California, after California there was Goldfinger, The Knife, it has like 90% identical sound. The other Goldfinger albums that came out uh, since The Knife were, sounded very close to California as well. And there was a band, what was it called? Make Out, yes. It was a band called Make Out and the album had the exact same sound as California again. And there was even this song like called Childish and the pattern of the chorus is identical to Bored to Death. So listen to this. All this stuff felt like Feldman has just gotten extremely lazy with creating sound for bands. He's just like, oh, you're, you're recording rock, pop punk? Yes, I have a cool preset. I mean, don't get me wrong, those are cool songs, but it's like, huh, this was successful. Let's do this all over again! I mean, I understand it, but as a consumer, music lover, <laughs> It's just a little lazy and boring. But California is still a cool album that has some cool songs on it. Um, cool drum beats. But it could have benefited from a more natural sound in some ways and a more unique sound. So I, when, this, when it came out, I, was, I found the, the sound to be cool. But after five more albums at the same sound, eh, not so much. Number six, Living Proof, State Champs. Living Proof was a breath of fresh air because it was finally something different again from all these other albums with this California sound. The band still sounds like the band, State Champs, but better than on the album before and just you could hear that Feldman produced it for sure, but it's a cool sound, only a little similar to the California sound, but it's definitely not another band sounding like Blink-182. It's the band sounds sounding like the band. And that's one thing I like about this album again from Feldman's productions. Number five, This War Is Ours, Escape the Fate. This is the second album of the American rock band Escape the Fate and it came out in 2008. Well, that rhymed. The album featured the band's new lead vocalist, Matt Oh, crack Mabbit. The album received like mixed to positive reviews, but I must admit it's a very cool album. I've, I've never heard of it, I've never listened to it, and I just find out about it because of the research for this video again. It 
has mostly clean vocals and cool melodies and uh, yeah, it's a pretty cool mix and I think you can definitely hear Feldman's influence on producing the album. The songs are very catchy. Hey! The drums are like crisp and everything is mixed very well and not as sterile as today's productions. The album is a little older, uh, so maybe it's because of that. Number four, Symphony Soldier, The Cab. The album came out in August 2011 and John Feldman produced the entire album and worked closely with the band to develop and refine their sound. The Cap is an alternative American pop rock band from Las Vegas, Nevada. And the album features collaborations with various songwriters and producers, including Bruno Mars, who wrote the song Endlessly, and members of Maroon 5 and Fall Out Boy. The album was entirely funded by the band and debuted at number 62 on the Billboard 200 chart. I think it sounds kind of radio soundish in, in a way. The vocals are very clear, you know, and yeah, it's a very, very high production and very clear. I mean, it's it's kind of poppy. Yeah, it's, it's like really pop rock because on the other hand, there are elements to it that are very cool and rocky. I can definitely hear influences like Maroon 5, Panic at the Disco, The Script, or even like boy band ballad styles, but everything in kind of rockier style. I was surprised to find this album. I've never heard uh, of the band or the album. So there were like two or three songs that I put in my playlist that I listen to at the moment. And that's cool. Have you ever heard of this album? Let me know in the comments. Number three, Hang Ups. Goldfinger. The band of John Feldman, Goldfinger. This is their second album. But for me, it was their first album all the time. But yeah, I found out they had another album with Here in your bedroom. My head That's pretty cool as well, but for me, this album has a special place in my heart. It's every spring when, when spring kicks in, this is the album to go. Come around to see your boyfriend. You come around to feel the pain. I put it in my CD player or on Spotify, and I don't know, I'm cleaning the windows or I'm I don't know. It's just it's just a spring album to me. The first song right away. <laughs> Superman from Tony Hawk. I mean, everyone knows this song. Come on. It's from Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1. So here I am, doing everything I can. Yeah, that's how I found out about the band. And it was always hard here in Germany to get some songs of Goldfinger back then before YouTube came uh, around the corner. I don't know. Maybe they had no distribution or bad distribution here in Europe or Germany because it was so impossible to get anything from Goldfinger. But then finally YouTube came along and I had the idea, oh, there's this new platform. Maybe I try to find some other Goldfinger songs. <gasps> I think the album is very, very great in terms of songwriting. The songs have so many different parts and chord progressions. Really, it's worth of a listen. Do it. Chris Caton, I called you Satan. It's when we were skating. Holding on to what I am. Pretending I'm Superman. Nah. Number two, In Love and Death, The Used. John Feldman almost produced every The Used song and The Used album out there. I had no idea. Even their latest single, Numb, is produced by John Feldman and it sounds pretty cool. It still sounds like the used, but modern and not too polished. Yeah, and it was really hard to pick one album because he produced all of those, or almost. And funnily enough, I have never listened to the used before. And guess what I've done the last week since I wrote the script for the video. They are freaking good. They have a bunch of great songs on every album, so it was so hard to pick one. But I think In Love and Death is like the sweet spot. The first album was good as well, 
But on that album, it was like a little more elaborated, you know. But even the album of 2012 sounds great as well. So you can go check every album out. But if I had to recommend one to you, it's this. It's just the vibe of that time. It came out in 2004. And I mean, listen to this. It's really hard to find some songs like this today with that sound, forget it, you can't find it. So check out the 2004 album and if you want to, maybe the 2012 album because there's a feature with Mark Hoppus and Travis Barker. Number one, Black Swan, Story of the Year. This album really belongs at the top of my list, plain and simple. Not only is it an excellent album of Story of the Year, but it's also one of the best sounding albums that Feldman has been involved with. And even in general, this album is phenomenal. My favorites of the album, Wake Up, The Antidote, Tell me and Feldman really did a great job on this one. It's hard hitting, but it sounds still natural, not too polished. To me, this album has everything what it what a good album needs. Great sound, great songwriting. Yeah. So if you haven't heard this album, you should definitely check it out now. Or maybe with the my favorite tracks that I just told you, that's a good starting point there. So I have to say, is John Feldman a bad producer? No, he's not, of course. He did some great albums. I know he's been criticized a lot for being too sterile and stuff like that and I see that I, I think so too in some cases um, California I mean it was a great album it had a Grammy nomination my god my god if California were the was the only album with that sound it would have been way better so maybe John a little more lazy a little more um, Innovative. I know you've done a lot of stuff and I think it's hard every time a new band, a new album to create a new sound for that particular artist. But I think that's the way it should be. What is your opinion of John Feldman? Write it down below and maybe check this one out. Top 10 most progressive Blink-182 songs. And I see you in the next one. <laughs> Living proof with a... <laughs> Living proof with a... <laughs> Living proof was a... Breathe a breath, living proof. What the? Scheiße. Das ist unglaublich, ey.